Hi everyone, it's Laura here, and in today's video I'm going to share with you how to create a fairy tale inspired scene card using stamps and dies by Heffy Doodle. I started by stamping my images on some Nina Solar White 110 pounds cardstock with Spectrum Noir alcohol proof ink because I want to be coloring them with my Illustrator markers. The images that I chose come from different stamp sets by Heffy Doodle. The Princess and the Castle are part of the Happily Ever Crafter stamp set. The Snowman, Hat, Body and Nose come from the Wanna Build a Snowman stamp set. And the Trees come from the Santa's Village stamp set. I then stamped the arms of the snowman using some leather ink by scrapbook.com. This is some brown ink. And later on, I'll be stamping this image again because I will use it on the head of the snowman instead of the hat that I stamped and that I will not be using for today's project. I then moved on and started coloring the images. I wanted the castle to be an ice castle, so I'm going to use some teal blues for my coloring. To give the castle the appearance of a frozen castle which is made of ice, I'm not going to cover the areas homogeneously, but I'm using some flicking motions with my markers. I'm also not going to go all the way to the stamp lines, but I'm leaving a little bit of a white edge all around the image. I hope you can see it, but it will be clearer as I go in with darker colors. And because this was the first time that I colored anything like this, I started with my lightest marker and I laid it down over the entire area so that I would get an idea of what the final result might look like. And then I went gradually with darker markers and started intensifying the contrast. The first marker that I used was the BT1 marker and now I'm going in with my BT3 marker going over those same areas but not extending the marker quite as far so that I leave enough space for my highlights. And to give a little bit of variation to the castle I will have the tower roofs and the gate be a little bit darker than the rest of the castle. For those areas I will go as dark as with my BT9 marker, whereas for the castle the darkest marker that I'll be using is a BT5 marker. I will be playing some music while I finish up coloring this image and I'll come back when it's time to color the rest of the images for today's card, because I have a few things to tell you about them as well. <laughs> I wanted the trees to look as if they were covered in snow, so I'll be shading them using some teal blue markers first, and then I brought in an HB marker, which is a very pale lilac marker, because I wanted everything that is snowy to be a little bit different in color from everything that is icy. So I'm going to use this color combination on all of the trees and also on the snowman's body. 
I started by adding some shadows with my BT1 marker and I'm leaving a white rim on the edge of the shadow area because I feel this gives a more round appearance to the images. And then I'm going to first deepen the shadows with my BT3 marker, blend everything out with the BT1 again and add a layer of HB1 on top to give a little bit of a purplish hue to the snowman as well. For our Snow Queen, I used the same color combination on her dress that I used for the castle. So I used BT1, BT3 and BT5. And also in this case, I'm adding those flicks to add a little bit of texture to the dress and link it visually to the castle that we will have in the background of the card. As I often do when I color with my alcohol markers, I went in with a second layer of color. I shaded the lower portion of her dress with a BT1 marker which I then blended out with a colorless blender and then I moved on and colored her hair. I wanted it to be blonde so I used LY1 and CT3 and I kept it fairly light. And then I moved on and started coloring the skin for which I used TN3, FS5, FS8 and FS9. I went in with a couple of layers to intensify the contrast and then I colored the carrot with some orange markers. I skipped the hat because at some point I realized I wasn't going to use that on my final image but instead I stamped the sticks once more with that leather ink by scrapbook.com and I die cut everything with the coordinating dies. All the supplies that I used for today's card will be listed and linked in the description box down below where you will also find a link to the blog post that I created for this card with more pictures and details. Next, I started working on the background for my scene. I decided to go for a slimline format, so this is 4 by 9 inches. I had a 12 by 9 inches sheet of watercolor cardstock by Spectrum Noir that I trimmed down in three. One panel will be the background where I will have the sky. From the other one, I obtained the hues using the Heffy Doodle stitched Sloppy Joe's border dies. And the third one I'll be keeping for another project. To add color to the sky, I decided to do some ink blending with Distress Oxides and I wanted to go for a cool color palette. So I started by blending Mute Lavender, I then moved on to Shaded Lilac and then I added some blues which are progressively darker as I move towards the top of the panel and those will be Salty Ocean and Blueprint Sketch. It is not shown here because this is something that I decided to do later on as the card was almost done, but I darkened up the top portion of the sky panel with a little bit of distress ink in the color chipped sapphire. As you can see, I am using my foam blenders to blend my inks for the sky and I'm going back and forth wherever there is a transition between two colors so that I'm sure that the gradient is nice and smooth. Having this color gradient that starts from lighter purplish hues and ends up with darker, more blue colors also contributes to create dimension and interest on the card. For me, scene cards are all about layers and all about depth, and this is another way to achieve it. Speaking of interest, I decided to add a little bit of water droplets on the sky and then I tried to sprinkle some salt on top because this usually gives a very cool effect when you work with watercolors. I wasn't sure to be honest if it was going to work here because most of the panel was dry and the point with salt is that you add it to a wet watercolor panel so I'm not sure if that made a big difference to be honest. Next, I added some shading to the hues and because I have that more purplish color on the trees and the snowman, I went for some more purple colors on the snow hues too. So there I used shaded lilac and tumbled glass. And then I moved on and before assembling my card, I had to build my snowman. I adhered the head to the body, I then glued down the nose and I used one of the stamps in the Wanna Build a Snowman stamp set to stamp the eyes. 
I used again my black ink from scrapbook.com and I also used a fine liner to draw in a little smile. I adhered the arms to the sides of his body and then I used another one of those stick images that I had stamped and die cut, also from the Wanna Build a Snowman stamp set, and I glued that behind his head. At this point all the elements were ready and I could go ahead and start assembling my scene. I'm using some tape runner to glue down the hues to the sky background. I'm going to overlap them so I create that nice layering and dimension and then I'm going to adhere my images using some liquid glue. I'm going to have the castle at the top of the hill on the background and then on the foreground I'm going to have my main images that are the snowman and the snow queen. I'm going to fill in the central portion of the scene with those trees that I had colored and die cut and to create even more sense of depth in the scene I'm going to adhere some of them behind the hill in the foreground, tucking them behind the die cut and I'm going to have some of them in the middle of the hill in the background. The sentiment warm hugs from the warm hugs stamp set was just perfect for this card and I decided to heat emboss it on the sky using some white embossing powder by WOW. I then moved on and started taking care of the finishing touches so I'm adding some highlights to the castle and I'm going to add some of them also to the dress of the snow queen. I'm using a Sakura Jelly Roll pen number 8. This is my go-to gel pen. The flow is nice and the coverage is good. I had to have a little bit of sparkle on the card, so I'm using my crystal stickles and I'm coating the dress of the little snow queen here and also I'm going to coat the gate and the roofs on the towers of the castle. This will dry clear but have some iridescent glitter in them which will add a lot of shimmer and shine to the card. And then I also decided to add a little bit of a more subtle sparkle to the snowman and the trees and for that I used a Spectrum Noir clear overlay pen. To ground the images I'm going to add some drop shadows with my illustrator markers and I'm also going to blend them out with my colorless blender. I used HB1 by the way if you're interested in the exact color that I used for the shadows. And then I decided to also add a few snowy hues here and there to fill in the scene a little bit more because I felt that that central portion was a little bit too empty for me. I used again my HB1 marker and then I blended everything out with a colorless blender and as a last step after having shaded the top portion of the card with the cheap sapphire I decided to add a few snowflakes around the sentiment. I didn't want to cover the entire sky but I wanted to create kind of a snow flurry effect around the greeting so I stamped the snowflakes from the Heffy Doodle Warm Hugs stamp set using some embossing ink and I heat embossed them with the same wet embossing powder that I used for the sentiment. I mounted everything on a card base that measures 8 inches by 12 inches and is scored at 4 inches and that finished off my card for today. If you guys enjoyed this video and liked the card make sure to let me know in the comment section down below and to give this video a thumbs up. Also don't forget that the list of supplies that I used with links to the stores where you can buy them is in the description box down below so make sure to check that out if you're interested. If you haven't already you can subscribe to my channel for more card making and paper crafting inspiration. Thank you all so much for stopping by and have a great day.